Hello everyone and welcome back to the 63rd episode of Panther Talks. Hello. That, that's pretty much all I can say. Typically podcasters do this like intro where they're like, I'm so and so host, this is so and so host. Like, But if you've watched to this point, you probably know what insanity is uh, due to come from it. Pretty much. I, I do need to find like a consistency at some point, but that, that's a future road problem. It's also assuming that you can be consistent. Yeah, that's the other problem to it, you see. <laughs> but, hey, <laughs> life summed up, eh? Uh, um, but yeah, we've got quite a few uh, interesting things to discuss this week. Uh, one of them being the Fallout series that everyone, I'm sure, is talking about currently. Uh, me and Will have both pretty much, I think, watched through it. Uh, Will's from what I know... I have and haven't. Like, the first few episodes yeah. definitely, but I was playing Fallout 4 whilst having it on, so yeah. He probably hasn't seen it as clear as I have, but we're not going to go into no. much spoiler territory. We're just going to kind of like overlap it and talk about what we enjoyed. Well, we can go over like the starting episodes, because that won't really reveal Yeah. Much, I think that's it, it is. It is only out, so like, we can talk more in depth about it next week. Sounds like when people have had a, a bit more of a chance to watch through it all. Cause... Sounds good. <clears throat> After that, we'll be moving on to Fallout London, one of the most popular, uh, what, sorry, one of the most looked forward to uh, mods that are coming out for Fallout 4, which is basically a DLC size mod, indefinitely delayed due to Fallout 4 current gen update. After that, we'll be moving on to Star Wars Outlaws. And the fact that Ubisoft has caused a couple issues with that, but also some positive news in regards to it. After that, we'll be discussing a multi-international lawsuit campaign going against multiple games companies to prevent uh, these companies from killing off games online and offline in the wake of the crew being unplayable. We were supposed to discuss this last week, I forgot about it. And finally, we'll be discussing After the Fall, after our live stream the other day, where we got back into it and tried to play a bit. That'll give you enough of a hint on how we feel so far. Yeah. But anyways, let's get into it. I'll uh, switch everything on so that everything's working just fine. Here we I'm go. I'm legally blind. He is legally blind. And now I'm not. Well. Well, to, to, to an extent, we'll say. There we go. So, the Fallout series. Dear God. When I watched the original trailer, I was put off it for one reason and one reason only. And... I can speak about this in clear quality because everyone's seen the trailer by now. Everyone that wants to watch it has probably seen the trailer. So I don't feel too bad about saying anything about the trailer. So Even people who don't want to watch it have seen the trailer. Right? Yeah. So the issue that I found was there was a guy in the trailer who had one eye in the center of his head. Yeah, he's a bit yeah. of a strange character. It's not his character that annoyed me. It was the design model. It, it you mean the fact those... that he still had like both of his eyes indents from like yeah. the eyes? Yeah. And his eyebrows. <laughs> and his eyebrows. I'm going to see if I can actually quickly find this. Uh... One eye guy. Images. Come on, he was in the trailer. It's very difficult to do this, isn't it? It's because he's just not that much of a main character, I guess. No. <sighs> oh. Come on, that should have done it. 
probably just not being Bing. not enough uploaded then. I think he's Bing, honestly. Because Bing is just horrific. Not recommended at all. Go away. No one likes your adverts. Ah, here we are. Should be able to see him now. That guy. He's got his eyebrows, both of them. But he only has one eye. It's weird. I mean, I guess just from the way, whatever way their evolution went, because, you know, of uh, the multiple, multiple generations of the same bloodline. Oh, yeah. So I, I can I can see like why certain parts would still be there, but it, it it doesn't really make sense too much. You can clearly tell the guy had his eyes closed. Yeah. <laughs> you can see where his other eye is. Oh, it's kind of funny. But yeah, the and the model of it basically just it it, it kinda of irked me a bit, and that's why I couldn't I really was like, if that's how that looks, how am I gonna feel about the rest of the series? But in honesty I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really, really good. Um, it was. It was really good. The intro absolutely f blew me away. The intro was awesome. <laughs> also kind of amusing. The the whole, whenever the bombs first drop, which isn't a spoiler, because, you know, it's Fallout, it's how it starts, and it's like, happens five minutes in. Yeah, they just, don't just bombs the look of Fallout. it. Oh, there's something wrong. <laughs> yeah, but just just the bombs dropping it alone were just looks were done so well. They looked awesome. The shockwave itself looked crazy. It was really well done. Wonder if we can find a clip of that actually. It'd be really nice because it looks tons better than it does in games. It really does. Oh, definitely, without a doubt. I d I don't think we can get a. Actual thing, but no, no, that's not a very good image. This sort of stuff is kind of what you started to see. It's a bit blurry, but yeah, it's definitely not as high quality as no. in the show itself. But it's not a terrible image. I see some foreshadowing now that I'm looking back at you. <laughs> but it was a very good way to show it before the bombs and then after. And what I also liked is this entire series is set after the events of all the games. So anything that is done in this is canon, but it's also going to express that in the future, whatever they decide to do, and if they decide to continue, we might actually see what the canonical ending is in certain games because we are always given multiple choices how's it actually going to turn out you know what i mean that, it's, that's going to be interesting yeah i'm very much intrigued to see uh how that turns out i must admit uh it'd be quite cool as well to just see what's going to happen but the actors in my opinion were really well chosen they they definitely did a really good job themselves, yeah. And the entire just like atmosphere and everything felt about accurate. I've got to say though, considering we said we're allowed to discuss what would you say, Will, the first two episodes? Yeah, we could we could start with that, yeah. Yeah. Sounds good to me. First episode, they're in the vault, things are going down, she's gonna get married to someone, goes back to her room. Sees this guy just drop his clothes and just immediately goes okie dokie and just <laughs> yeah. jumps his bones. It's like, and that becomes like her catchphrase the entire series. It's like, what the hell, woman? Some of the most bizarre shit in the world goes off, and all she responds is okie dokie and just gets on with it. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> but I found that really fascinating. It really shows how it is, though. And something else I quite like about the series, it does not shy away from showing you how fucked up vault Tech was. I just how fucked up Fallout itself is. Oh, yeah. You look at it in depth. Oh, 
Because a lot like, of people... Even twist and the things going on were chaotic. Oh, yeah. A lot of people, like, miss seeing this sort of side. And I've got to say, I love the fact that they basically went, well, everyone loves the bloody mess perk. Let's just make every kill like it's a bloody mess perk. Uh, I mean, uh, not a bad idea. It, it was a damn good idea. I mean, some of the impressive kills I've seen were insane. And I'm pretty even, sure... Even when you don't even think about the kills, just, just when people got hurt in general. Oh, like, yeah. There, there was no holding back. That there weren't. I know when Maximus, and you can clearly see he's in power armor, so no spoiler there. When he got his power armor and we're testing it out, I just love the fact that he grabbed someone to stop him killing each other. And all that the guy turned around and said afterwards was, I'm fine, fine, don't kill me. It's just, the guy was fucking my chickens. <laughs> it, it just made me put my head in my hands and go, this is actually roughly how it would go, yeah. I mean, come on, the entire world's gone to shit. Fair play. And yeah, it, it, was did, funny. it did successfully manage to show how showing three separate characters and what their stories are doing at the time. Yeah, sometimes they're linked up, but across the entire thing, typically split up a bit. And just seeing what's happening with them and how things are growing and expanding, how more information's coming out, whether it being back in the past or modern or what's going on. It was very interesting just seeing all this added together. And it came out as such an interesting show. I'll be honest, I am a bit sad we didn't see more caps. Yeah, you got a couple like bits, like when, say for example, when the ghoul guy eats uh, a couple of the cherry tomatoes. Yeah. He like <laughs> throws some caps on the floor as if, as if to be like, here, I don't give a shit. Yeah, exactly. But it was... I honestly can't really like slim it into words. <laughs> it's very fascinating. It gives you a lot more of a deeper look at vault which is always good because as we all know, they are the scum of the earth, and some of their experiments are horrific. Some. Oh. Top four, man. <laughs> you what, sorry? You say some, but look at some vault four. Yeah, that's fair. Episode eight, seven, six, I think it is. It's messed but, up shit, man. Yeah. Honestly, the stuff that goes on is insanity. But... It's fascinating to see what a series can put a spin on. And the fact that Todd Howard was actually one of the executive producers. It's I also think nice helped. to have like a new way to look at some of the older games that are like some of the most beloved uh, and still played today. Oh, 100%. It's, it's nice to see something new being done with them. I fully agree. Also, I'm relatively certain of this, but I need to check it quickly. So, I'm just going to have a quick check for something here. But if I'm right, this guy is now one of my favourite people. Nah, I don't think I'm right. He uh, voiced the Mr. Handys in the uh, series. He actually played it. He's a character in the series too, man. Yeah. And he voiced he, Mr. Handy, like, I don't know, is he the guy who voiced the original Mr. Handy? I'm trying to find that out. Like him. Yeah, that's what I thought. He definitely got the voice right, anyway. Stephen Russell. Voiced the original Mr. Handy's. But yeah, he sounds very, very close. And it was kind of funny, because they actually had it as he was an actor back in the past. And he got told, yeah, I got given one of these robots. Do you know how annoying it is to come home and just hear your own voice spouting lines to you? <laughs> and it's just it's small things like this that are comical 
but they keep you just going and laughing through and it's such a good time and also extremely grim but i cannot for the life of me say how much i enjoyed this yeah as you can see series produced todd howard i mean he had to be part of it you know? yeah wouldn't wouldn't have been wouldn't have happened I, I think that's probably what kept a lot of it on track. And he kept it so well into the series and how it was working. They they did a damn good job, that's for certain. A hundred percent. It was so cool as well to, like, as the series went on, you recognize more and more stuff from the Fallout worlds. Yep. Things like Red Rocket, Sugar Bombs, Bloody Abraxo Cleaner. <laughs> All little stuff, but you've seen them hundreds of times and you recognise the names off the top of your head. Uh, fucking Robco, General Atomics, all that sort of stuff. And you're like, bloody hell yeah, I know all this. And it's insane. It, it really is just insane, the stuff that you start to come across while watching it. Or even little Easter eggs. One of the things you see about Maximus is... He was a child and a bomb. In the fridge. Off. Yeah, and he was in a fridge and got out <laughs> and saw a Brotherhood of Steel member. Now, the part about this is what popped in my head is Billy the Kid, Billy the Ghoul Kid, who was hiding in a fridge Yeah. in Fallout 3. The first thing I thought of. <laughs> yeah, same. A lot of people went, Indiana Jones reference, and he's like, yeah, that is true as well, but most definitely Billy the Kid. Well, Billy the Ghoul Kid. And it's just small little things like that really hit well. And as you can see here, Robco Fun. You've just got lots of little things in pretty much every image that you can just click onto. And uh, they seem to do so well. The backpack she's wearing, Vault 33 backpack, has already been created as a mod. And on top of that, I think they're actually going to be releasing it as a mod, uh, as a uh, add-on to the game. A lot of Russian. Oh, is that how they were advertising it? Excuse me. No problem. But yeah, that's uh, the Fallout series. I highly recommend people to take a look. If you are any sort of fan of the game, even if you're not, it might be your thing. It's action-packed as hell. It's got an interesting story to keep you gripped through. And it's just... And you never so know. Bizarre. Maybe people watching the Fallout series that have never actually played the games might take interest in playing the game. Yeah. I mean, Walton Goggins, I read this the other day, so this is why I know this. He actually came out and said he hadn't played the games because he didn't want his, basically action of being a ghoul to be completely dictated by how the games are which yeah. is understandable but being in that universe i do hope at some point he just picks up while the games and goes i'm interested let's see but no much respect to it all and i really am excited because i've heard there's a high chance of a season two so fingers crossed I mean, we were discussing it very briefly with how, how it's been left off. It kind of yeah. has to be. There's a uh, cliffhanger. Like, that's all we can say. We'll uh, discuss it in more detail, though, next week. Yeah. That way we're not stepping on anyone's toes who've gone, I really want to watch that, though. And mm. we'll put a spoiler warning ahead, so don't worry. So, let's move on to Fallout London. I am beyond disappointed about this. So for people that don't know, Fallout London was a DLC-sized mod. I say DLC-sized, realistically it's game-sized. Um, they even had voice acting in the game from two people who played Doctor Who. Damn. Uh, they have done like a lot of work in it, and they've been working non-stop for ages. But... They were set to release on April 23rd. Sadly, it has been delayed indefinitely. And basically the reason behind this is 
all of a sudden, Fallout 4 came out with an announcement. It's getting a free update. And whenever the game gets these sort of updates, it kind of messes with a lot of mods. A lot of people don't know this, but it is how it's always been. And mods work through changing files or, yeah. or adding or removing, etc. And if new things get added, it can just it it will more than likely just either stop the mod from working or corrupt it all together. Exactly. And that's kind of the problem we're facing here. Um oh the Steam Deck verifying it though. <laughs> Interesting. But yeah. It's the problem we're facing here. They're updating the game, and with that update, that's going to corrupt a lot of mods. And Fallout London will be no exception to this matter. It will cause a lot of problems. As it says here, this is because Fallout 4 is getting a sudden next-gen update on April 25th, two days after their initial release date was planned for, which they've been planning this for a long time and announced their release date, I think, early last year. And then they drop this randomly, which has forced Team Furlon to adjust the mod so that it works with the new framework. They're changing the framework. That's going to take a lot of time. Project lead Dean Carter says that the work could take a week or it could take a month. So there's no set release date for Fallout London. We have said, they have said it could take a month, probably looking near max, but you can't say I don't, for certain. I don't think they'll not do it. They'll All keep the up other. with it, with everything like, that they've done already. They're going to have to basically restart, yes, which sucks, but I, with the amount of work they've already put in to their mod, I don't think they'll just put it on hold and call it a day. No, the good news is they don't even have to restart. They just have to adjust it for the new framework. So everything it's gonna, it's already take got. a lot of work because I'm sure whatever update comes out and the stuff they change, add and so on, it's probably going to just obliterate the way the mod works. It's like, a high guarantee. But I don't I don't think they'll give up on it all together. No, they definitely don't. You see, the reason I'm so excited for this uh, mod is because when I said it's like a new game, it literally removes the entirety of Fallout 4's campaign and world. And instead, you are given Fallout London. And if you've not checked out any trailers yet or anything like that, I highly recommend you do so. Because the work these guys have put in is insane. There's a brand new story, loads of brand new weapons, armor, factions, side quests. According to, what is it? I think there's like 100 hours worth of more content. Uh, let me see. So if I just type in Fallout London, here we are. They have a official web page as well, uh, which you can see you've got their announcement there, which will actually show you a bit of Fallout London. Uh, just showing a couple of pictures here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Releases. You can see some of the like old weapons and armor. Junkie Knight, Cable Street Wars, Royal Guard, Tenpenny Airlines, all this sort of stuff that they've done. Uh, the factions. I can imagine they're gonna, in the mod, there's probably gonna be some weapons from older games that have been like. Oh, guaranteed. Pizza community's favorite weapons and just not like seen enough of yeah stuff like that but i i don't think you've ever been to london have you will <clears throat> no and i don't think i will ever go anywhere near it i do not blame you i wouldn't either if i had a choice i'm joking <laughs> um but he's not <laughs> this is a part of uh islington and just to show you sort of what they're trying to say happened in London, because this is the first time really we've looked away from America. And then you got Camden, which you just start to slowly see more and more of the world and how things are going over in Hackney. 
I just think it's interesting because what they've had to do is imagine, okay, so how's London typically look? Cool. How would it look if we futurized it a bit? Okay. Mm. Now how would it look if we destroyed that fucking entire world? And this is the sort of design what would ideas. If we drop five hundred nukes on it. Yeah. But this is the concepts and things they came up with. I think it genuinely looks absolutely stunning. I I know as a Brit I should probably not say that, considering, you know, it's the capital destroyed. I wouldn't worry. I, I love the mustache on this little robot and suit, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really quite cool. Westminster? I would say there'd be a lot of very recognisable places. Oh, yeah. And that's going to be a big um, thing. It's going to be the constant meme of that guy pointing at the TV, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like Fallout, uh, like uh, GTA Five when them people met up on a place uh, in real life. But hmm. I just think it's so interesting to see something like this because for a lot of us that aren't based in America this is something new. We'll be able to go, oh yeah, I know this place, or oh yeah, this looks somewhat familiar. Or this is somewhere relatively close to me, rather than just, yeah, this is a place I'll probably never go, because it's in America. Yep. You know what I mean? But, that's one of the interiors they've done. Uh, I'm not going to show off everything, because really would rather not uh, but I'll just read this description and some of the history behind it that way it can give people a bit of an understanding of what this is Fallout London is a DLC sized mod for Bethesda's Fallout 4 distinct from the base game the mod will allow uh, the player to visit the previously unexplored post-apocalyptic environment of London in a divergence from previous official titles in the series Fallout London is not set in America. No shit. Really? This will allow the player to explore an entirely new setting, interact with new post-war cultures and societies, and see a world distinct from... I think the uh, Distinct from the Americana of the mainline games. It also allows the player to explore pre-war European history and affects the resource that wars had on the class-structured society of pre-war Britain. The Fallout London development team is a collection of both amateur and industry professionals that are working to create a project for the community with a shared vision. The project is a chance for the team to be creative and try new things that they otherwise couldn't when constrained to the confines of the industry. It's the, it is all a true labour of love for all involved. Which I fully respect. To give you an understanding of when this team got together, early 2019. So they've been, they've been working on this for a hell of a long time. Five years, yeah. Cannot blame them for being quite pissed about the update then. 100%. Uh, originally a small team, it banded together under the leadership of Prilodog with the goal of creating a small quest for the game Fallout 4. Having the mod based in an untouched location in the Fallout lore meant that the team had a fantastic and unique opportunity to express their creativity, something that showed very uh, very prominently in the early years of the development process, and it resulted in such a large influx of new and excited members that it quickly expanded to a vast team of people from all around the world including members from the United Kingdom, USA, Canada, Australia, Hungarians, Swedish, Netherlands, Russia, and many others. So literally just everywhere. Yeah. And surely like, they've got one from London, right? Guaranteed. <laughs> By 2020, the team announced that they had finished the world, a world space comparable to the size of Far, Far Harbour, which is a monumental milestone and something not many other projects have reached. Now the team is yeah, in the... I actually can 
not really tell you anything about Far Harbor, man. I've never done it. Let's see. I, I always get so sidetracked. I've went there before. I've done a very small amount of stuff, and I mean, like, minimum, like, maybe one quest. But otherwise... Well, that's I the size of Far Harbor. It's not too bad. It's a decent size expansion, for sure. Yeah. Let's uh, have it side by side. Uh, which one's Far Harbor? I think it's this one. Yeah. Yeah, that looks like it. That's not too bad. That's like a good chunk of the map. Well, a good like quarter. <sighs> which yeah. It's still pretty decent. So, uh, here we are. Uh, which is monumental. Yep. Uh, now the team's in the deeper stages of the development process and is working hard towards the balance between what makes a good Fallout game and what adheres to the team's creative vision. Fallout London is very much part of the lifeblood of the, all the team members and something that the team is very proud of. I would like to say this, actually, just coming back to this little bit here. They're trying to figure out what makes a good Fallout game and what adheres to the team's creative vision. That is a very good thing to focus on. Because they're not just going too much with one or too much with the other. They're trying to find a balance between the two. Which is something even a lot of AAA developers who've already made some of the series struggle to do moving forwards. They struggle to kind of find what made the first game so enjoyable or the first couple games. So that's good to see. The struggles are endless, but always worth the challenge. Progress is something we will not falter on. The team is very excited to bring you the end result, and in the unlikely event something drastic should happen, the team maintains a secure backup to ensure a part release will come out. The team at Fallout London does this for the community, and we hope you'll love our final product as much as we do. Stay safe, and remember, mind the gap. Because, you know, we don't hear that all the time. But yeah, they're actually thinking about what's going to happen, what's to come, all that sort of stuff. And I have a lot of respect for that. I mean, from the sounds of how completely and utterly fucked the entire game is going to be mods-wise, yeah, it's looking like it's going to be best to just wait like a month. <laughs> yeah. Let let everyone update all their mods. Exactly. I mean, they're going to have to do it for their entire DLC-sized update. So, I can't imagine how long that will take, personally. But they said it could take a week, it could take a month. When they feel it's ready, they will release. And I'm sure we will cover it then. Because I guarantee you I will be on it the moment it's uploaded. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, it, it's you, you're talking about new new content, you know, for Fallout. Yeah. So uh, I can take it you'll probably take a look yourself. I'll, I honestly, I'll probably wait to hear from you to see if it's working or not. <laughs> see if it's worth it or not. I like it because I'll probably have God knows how much. Um... Progressive mods and current Fallout. Oh, same here. I've just finished installing a 69.97 gig update uh, mod pack, sir. So, Star Wars Outlaws. It doesn't have Ubisoft's infamous open world towers. They've got rid of them. <laughs> yes, that, that's actually a positive new No. We never hear this. But what I'm going to say before we get into the positive news of that, because that's literally the positive news I have. <laughs> I know, right? Good times. Slightly concerned. Yeah. I have some negative news, which is that Ubisoft is currently under fire because of their pricing campaign for Star Wars Outlaws. Oh, now, what is the current price? I don't have 
an article on it. So I thought I'd just uh You what an article. Star Wars Outlaws oh. criticized for £115 Ultimate Edition pre order. That is absurd. Yep. And that's in pounds, so uh let's see. Single player game offers players the chance to get ahead of any spoilers, blah 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 blah. Also on offer are cosmetic packs for the speeder and spaceship, a season pass that will grant two DLC and an exclusive mission titled Jabba's Gambit that will be available at launch. I hate exclusive missions. Yeah. The game's initial price is £60. The Ultimate Edition will cost £115. Which is almost double the base games. Yeah. That's the bad news. Ubisoft has continued with their bullshit pricing scandal. So bad news. It's complete no bullshit. Exactly my thoughts. Because I'm actually kind of intrigued by Star Wars Outlaws. I think it'd be interesting to take a look at. But I personally never had really any interest in Star Wars full stop. But I know the games, especially, like, loads of people can't see play them. Oh, yeah. Well, it's one of those things with Ubisoft, and it wouldn't surprise me if they're just trying to rake back some of that money they lost with Skull and Bones. Uh. Star Wars Outlaws does away with one of you, uh, one big Ubisoft open-world tradition. Players won't have to climb radio towers to reveal parts of the map as it opens up simply through exploration. I don't hate radio towers, but they've been a be uh, been done better than in Far Cry 3, so it's time to move on. I'd agree with that. And the fact that this is something we're classifying as a positive thing is a bit weird. <laughs> but that's literally, that. that's what's positive here. The game looks good, I'm intrigued by it, but compared to the pricing scandal, does this really hold up as an article? I wouldn't say so. It's crazy, man. Honestly. I completely agree. So, here's something I found on uh, Twitter the other day. <laughs> Ross Scott, Freeman's Mind is doing a multi-international lawsuit campaign against companies to stop killing off games, online and offline, in the wake of the crew becoming unplayable. He's a games preservation advocate, probably the most important political event in gaming history. I do agree with the idea of preventing games being killed off. My big thing, we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago with the uh, takedown of a lot of emulators by Nintendo. Mm. And the one that I disagreed with most was the one that was for the 3DS, considering the 3DS is no longer accessible. And all the games, 90% uh, of the games, sorry, you could only get through the 3DS store. And the 3DS store has now been turned off. Meaning emulation is the only way to basically do it. But you can't because Nintendo said no and slapped someone's wrist. Yeah, so they're just taking every option away to play a game. Exactly. And for people like this guy and many others who want to preserve these games because they were major points for a lot of people, they're losing that possibility. And even if you bought said games, you'll lose access. It's only a matter of time. And that's kind of what's starting to anger people about it all. But there's nothing that we can really do about it. Because that's up to, uh, well, that's up to the companies to listen. Or if this guy wins his lawsuits, I suppose. It's not something that I'm going largely into depth in because I've not done too much research on it. Uh, but overall, I'd completely back this point. And I do think companies need to start paying more attention into what the consumers are actually wanting than just going, well, it affects our money. Because we all know Nintendo are the best at suing people. I'd actually say they're better at suing people than making games, but that's me. I mean, 
if a game is like completely dead and there's literally like no one's playing like other than like 10 people then you know there's no point having it up i agree but, but at least have games that are going down as well like people are still playing them like a lot of people there's still like a large community as well and they're just they're not caring yeah but you see i also think yeah, take them down, but at least leave a way for people to be able to access them if they want to play them in the future. There's a reason people bought a game. It's not because we go to it once and then never touch it again. I mean, there's a game called Alpha Protocol. Uh, it came out quite a few years ago. And you can't buy this game on Steam anymore. At one point, you the only way to get a hold of it was to buy a CD key, and that CD key was about sixty pounds. Jesus! This game came out years ago. Take in mind. GOG recently brought this game back, allowing many people, myself included, who've wanted to get this for a game for a very long time, a way to actually play it, which is phenomenal for us. We're actually able to do this now. And I'm very happy about it, to be honest with you. But yeah, I think there needs to be something put in place for this, if I'm brutally honest. So, final topic. I'm sure Will's going to be so happy. I'm upset, man. Same here, mate. Same here. Everyone and anyone who tunes in will know fine rightly that we enjoy our VR games and we're constantly on the lookout for something new to play, especially co-op. A hundred percent. But, but, yeah, after the fall, unfortunately, has slowly gotten worse and worse. Yeah. For a while, we stopped playing because they went, something went wrong with an update, in our opinion. It just did not feel right to play. Guns, we... just full stop, did not feel anything what they did before the update. Yeah, had no power behind them or anything. It was shocking. We think we found out why in this update. And it's literally that little yellow counter there. Take that off your gun, you do 50% more damage. No, that, no, that's not right. That's, that's how much it was. It's manual reload is fifty percent more damage. The oh yeah, ammo that. Count is ten percent. Ten percent stagger damage, whatever the fuck that's meant to mean. All right. But yeah, basically you get extra damage for removing that. Manual reload went up from ten percent extra damage to fifty percent. No reason behind it. That that's just what this recent update did. It's not like that makes a difference anyway, because you go on the harder difficulties and. You could you have to unload an entire mag into a head to kill one snowbreak. Yeah, and not just that. When we were playing, uh, I'll actually just fast forward this a bit because I got really annoyed that this actually was happening. Uh, it should be happening about here. Yeah, so I'm just going to mute the audio, and you'll be able to see it from one of my eye views. I think it's my right eye, looks to be. But basically, what happened, and we can't figure out why, but the meta seems to be to pick up all the grenades and bring them all the way through the level with you. Yeah, so you spend like more time like throwing the grenades from the start of the level to the end than you do actually like playing the game. And it still doesn't even guarantee that you can complete the level successfully. Yeah, we still got our asses handed to us. To be just straight up with you. It was horrific. Not to mention the amount of times that you get revived by someone and the boss instantly aggroes on you and runs faster than you and insta-kills you before you even get the chance to reload your gun. Yep. Now, don't get me wrong, the atmosphere this game portrays is still fun. But the moment you get to harder difficulties, there's no point in playing if you've only got a few people. Because the online guys, they don't care about a lot of that stuff the higher level they even drop uh floppy disks that are like yellow i think it is or gold or green or whatever yeah, green ones, yeah. yeah 
they drop them. Me and Will need them. They do not. So like, they don't see a point in them. We're talk we're also talking like people with a thousand hours in the game, because that's probably you definitely have to put at least a couple hundred hours to unlock all the attachments because it takes that long. You get so few um floppy disks as well. Yeah. It was we were, we were discussing it as well when we were playing. We were talking about like when when you talk harder difficulty, it doesn't mean oh just make enemies bullet sponges. That's not no. harder difficulty. That's just a waste of time and effort. Honestly, harder difficulty, in my opinion, give us less ammo boxes, put a few more enemies in. Don't make them tougher, just give us more. Yeah. We'll have no complaints over that. I mean, come on, I was using a shotgun. If you're going to make I... bullet sponges, you make, like, their general bodies, like, take less damage because, you know... Typically, that's how it would go. You know, bodies don't really... Shooting the body doesn't really do a whole lot. Maybe you can blow off limbs, but that's about it. But typically speaking, like, you need to be going for headshots yeah. to get the most damage. What I found funny, though, we're on this... This difficulty is basically, like, one before the last. And I never once ran out of ammo in my shotgun. To put that into consideration... I have, I think it's 7 rounds per mag, and a total of 40 rounds. 47 if you count the 7 that's currently in my mag. I so, ran down to probably about 15 at lowest. How does that make sense? Considering you're watching how I'm playing as well. That there's just so many ammo boxes. Another thing that I hate as well when playing games is two-handed weapons, but you can only, only like you have to keep the main hand holding it. Like if you let go of the main with the main, like so your hand holding the grip where the trigger is, and then your other hand holding the the stock for yeah. stability. If you let go of the main hand while still holding on to the gun with your with your left hand, it, it warps the gun back. You can't hold it with your other hand. No, I agree. Because it just it feels so stupid. Yeah. The fact does. that the the cham the bolt for the chamber to load load the gun fully when you empty the mag completely is on the other side of the gun and you're leaning over the gun. It just it seems so stupid. And it makes the game it makes like when you're looking at someone else reload as well, it yeah. makes them look stupid because typically their arm of the character goes through the weapon. No, you're completely right. I mean, that shotgun I kept having issues with it. Because, like, I go to put my hand over and then grab, like, the uh, pullback. The, yeah. The catch. And I'd pull it, uh, go to do that, and every time I'd end up, like, grabbing the end of the gun or grabbing the fucking ammo. It's like, why the fuck am I doing this? And then those guys just went, got everything they wanted and fucked off. That was the end of that. Yep. No, this is and, the thing with playing around as well as they don't give a shit about anyone else. They just run run the these the items as fast as they can so they can get them instead of anyone else. It's just, exactly. You can't have fun playing with randoms in games like these. No. Oh. See, when me and Will get stuff, we'll discuss. All oh, right, do you want this? Do you want this? And that's how we do things. Unless it's a pipe bomb. Rory gets the pipe bombs thrown in his head. Yep. I am the <laughs> pipe bomb master. I run in um, with one in each hand. Activated. Choose your words carefully here. Yeah, I realised very quickly, so I was very careful <laughs> what I said. <laughs> I know exactly what both of us would say. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking it. We point guns at each other as well and just shoot. As you can see. <laughs> but we have fun where we can, but this was the only enjoyment we really had, I think. Don't get me wrong, the gunplay is somewhat satisfying, but it just, there wasn't enough here. Yeah, and to get the, the higher tier stuff and the new weapon especially, you have to play in the harder difficulties to get the red floppies. Yeah. And you can't do that if you don't have enough people. Exactly. A lot of people are saying stuff like the unlock system is terrible, you find colour-coded loot drops... Uh, you have to make it out of the mission with that. Uh, 
random unlocks for weapons you probably don't have. You have to unlock the weapons in the loot drops as well. I'd agree with that, but now you don't have to make it out of the missions to keep the ones that you find in mission. Just to complete and you'll get extra. But we also noticed that you might not get a loot, uh, a card that one of your allies has looted if you don't extract. Which is a very bizarre idea. Yeah. Overall, it's honestly become a bit of a letdown. Definitely. And it doesn't help the fact that, to be honest, at times the game jitters. For no apparent reason. I don't know if you've noticed that as well, Will, but... I don't think I've ever had any performance issues. I have, like, the occasional jitter, and it's, like, for no apparent reason. Yeah, there's just... There's quite a few, like, possible issues that you can discuss, and... Honestly, I can't see us returning to it in the way we used to, due to this. It's quite I just think, like I like having a game to grind to yeah. unlock stuff, but the fact that you know you've got like main weapons that you want to use. So I'm using the LMG and the SMG because you know they're probably going to be the two highest damage weapons that are there. Um, yeah, between those two and the shotgun, but I don't particularly fancy shotguns all that much yeah I get you. and i'm there trying to get stuff unlocked for them we go through a level we manage to complete it we get like three red floppies and three legendary floppies yeah. and i go into the armory to see what i've got because for no apparent reason it wouldn't show me on the end of the level what i got and i go in to look through my guns put my two main weapons that i'm using and uh, just to see there's nothing unlocked for them no i agree with you man because they're all on, they're they're all on the fucking revolver that has the slowest fire fire rate in the game that has six rounds in in a in a in the chamber, chamber and that's it yeah and you just sort of sat there like well I'm not going to use this gun never there's no real point in it it no. just some days it genuinely makes you question but all we want is a good VR co-op game mm -hmm. nothing seems to be able to really give you that. It's quite sad. Nothing at all. I mean, hey, I'd even drop the VR bit and just say a good bloody co-op game at this point, but don't seem to be getting that's that bad. one either. Let's be honest, we're desperate for a VR one, though. Oh, yeah. We're desperate for a VR one. I'd say we're about equally desperate for just a good co-op game as well. Yeah. But just anything co-op. We just that. Need, we need something, man. Yeah. I don't care if it's even a fucking demo just to whet his appetite for a little. At least let us know something's coming out. Like, Rory, I just... I can't... I can't get away from it. I'm just gonna send you a screenshot, man. I just went on. I went on to the actual, like, main page for VR titles, and... but Like, what, what, the, what the fuck is this? The bottom of it. That's the top title. Ah. Yes, Will's getting more, uh... Hello, that is Anne type. Frank's house. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. But now we're constantly checking out the uh, VR shops and VRs anywhere we can check stuff for VR, just to find something co-op that's good. But it is beyond a challenge. There's so many games as well that are all, like, realistic swap breach and shit style, yeah. you know? And they're all so bad because they're just boring. It's not a good idea for VR. It's so slow and boring. Like, if you're playing VR and you've got guns, you want to be shooting them, not, like, slowly edging around every corner. got to say, if it wasn't, though, for uh, the fact that the game... The uh, like breaching game you and me played ages ago had the collision of like fucking two cardboard boxes. We'd have been all right because that one wasn't too bad. You actually kept moving, sort of thing, but it just had such bad collision. 
Mm. Wait a minute, what? Someone's created a VR game. All it does is basically just show you where to keep in. That way you're not going to end up tangling yourself in cables. I'm very intrigued by what that means, but okay. Yeah, I don't think I've ever gotten caught in my cable. I do. The most, All the the time. most, I, the most I've done is stepped on it and pulled my head down. Yeah, I've got like a five meter cable, so I've not got too much of a worry in that regard. Oh, mine's long as fuck as well. It's just with, how, with the way I move around, and then I like move forward a lot <laughs> to touch my, and end up touching my wall. And then go to walk back and just stand on the wire and yank my head to the floor. <laughs> yep, that's about right. But even if you're looking co-op rather than just VR, there's still not too much that really will keep you going like, yeah, this is what I want to play. I mean, what, I've been playing Helldivers 2 and that's probably it. And I've not even played that for a couple of weeks. Mm. You know what is weird to see, though, on the second to top? What? Fallout 76. Now, the first to take a That's a very guess. short experience I had with 76. I, I sort of just lost interest straight away. Yeah, I, w I played for a fair few hours, to be honest. Uh, 100.4 hours. And I've heard from a lot of people it's got a lot better. And it's like, yeah, I'll take a look at some point, but that's at some point down the road. I'm not bothered just yet. Yep. But I think it's due to, if I'm honest with you, it's primarily due to the series. Play for free now ends in four days. That's also probably doing it. But it's one of those games. It wasn't good when it started out at all. Apparently, it's got a lot better. But has it really? We'll have to wait and yeah. see. It's, it's got 75% sort of positive. positive. It just sort of sets the tone, though. And yeah. That's it. it started off, the way it started off is just put you off it all together. I had a lot of games like that. I've managed to get back to quite a few of them, though. A uh, prime example, No Man's Sky that we discussed last week. That made a very good uh, return. But I just... If Fallout 76 really has made a return, I might put, uh, put it back on my library and reinstall it and give it a shot. But we'll see. Once again, it's more MMO focused, which means playing with others. And... Yeah, yeah, I'd personally Fallout... prefer co-op rather than MMO. Yeah. Fallout is not that style of game, you know? Uh, no, it's the fact, the fact that there's random people in the lobby as well is just so annoying. Like, we literally just discussed how, like, playing with randoms is just so shit yeah. in most games. And that's the last thing you want in the game, like, Fallout. Yeah, and I am not fucking paying for the right to be able to play without randoms. Fuck that. Yeah, it's so dumb. <laughs> that shit I, I think, pretty sure I remember you telling me that it's changed, but whenever the game first came out and I, I tried playing a little bit, you had to essentially pay to get repair kits to repair your guns. Uh, It's nowhere near as bad now. Yeah, mainly because you, you get you like a metric fuck ton of atoms for free as well. It's still stupid though. Yeah. Hey. At the end of the day, if you end up running out, you would have to pay to repair your gun. To play, just, just to use your weapon, which is the main thing you do in Fallout, is use your gun to kill the enemies. You have to pay to, to, for that. Well, <laughs> what they did make it a bit better. Uh, basically, what they did was you can repair now at a uh, weapon station or an armor station, dependent. But, you know, like, if you're out and about and your weapon breaks... Mm. then you can use one of these paid repair kits to just do it while you're out and about. Personally, what I started to do was just create... I created a secondary base that I can place down. And with this base, all I'd do is whenever i place it, it would just be like some benches. Place it down, spawn the benches in, 
go over to it and it would just be a case of jump up, repair my item, close the base down. How, like, does it cost anything to repair the item or what? Uh, it costs some materials like it does in typical Fallout. Yeah. But, you know, if you're not fucking... That you, not that you have crap. to repair your items in typical uh, you do in Fallout 3 in New Vegas. Yeah. Not in 4. It's just, it's such an annoying, like, unnecessary feeling task. Like, I get the world's in and, you know, the weapons are going to be low quality, so they're not going to last very long. But after after a set amount of time, it just becomes a chore. And it's pointless. I uh, do have to correct, actually. It is in Fallout 4 as well. It's just, it's in the hard uh, hardcore difficulty. Fair enough. Same with New Vegas. Uh, Free doesn't have a hardcore difficulty. That game's just Hard complicated. <laughs> We've all done the Megaton nuke explosion. <laughs> That's all I have to say on that one. I don't know. I just think having to repair items in a game, unless it's like ease of access all the time. Yeah, or like it takes two seconds to get that access. It's just it's the most annoying mechanic in the game because it's just a waste of time constantly. Yeah, I mean I know in Fallout Four and Fallout New Vegas and Three, you would basically you can do it in your inventory. You just get a perk and then you just do it in your inventory, mm. and that shows basically it's kind of like character growth more than anything. So basically, like. Oh, right, yeah, your character's got so good at repairing things, now they don't need a fucking workbench to do it. Now you can just take this spanner and uh, duct tape duct tape together with that duct tape itself and slap it on the gun to repair it. Yeah, exactly. But that sort of stuff, in my opinion, from like an RPG story perspective, that makes sense. It's also the wasteland, you know, you have to adapt, you need to be able to do it on the go, you're not going to have access to a workbench. Exactly. Time. Unless, you know, you've talked to Preston Garvey 700 times and just turned the entire wasteland into one massive settlement. <laughs> Preston Garvey needs to take a long break. <laughs> dude needs a fucking rag shoved in his mouth, dude. Doesn't he just... <laughs> Fuck me. Dude, I was playing it yesterday. I went and took over the castle and then went back to him. He was like, there's a, there's a settlement marked on your map. Let's go to the castle. I went to the castle, took the castle over, came back. There's another settlement. Let's go to the castle and set it up with the thing. I fucking fast traveled to the castle. First thing he said to me, here's another settlement. Then I powered the radio station. He was like, this is amazing. Here's another settlement. I'm like, bro. <laughs> Give me a fucking break. <laughs> Excuse me, Preston. I don't see you paying my salary. Like nothing actually happened, nothing changed because I don't. I I went and took over the castle, and all I did was fast travel to your your old house, talk to him, then fast travel back to the castle, talk to him, power the station, and talk to him again. So it didn't actually do anything, and he gave me at least three quests for settlements. Yeah, that's about right, for Preston. It's like As I, I said... don't have enough oil to make this many turrets. <laughs> As I I'm said just to you putting earlier. 20 down in the castle, man. Yeah. As I said to you earlier, though, I've basically, since, like, just before this episode, I started installing a mod pack called A Story Wealth. Adds a load of, like, story mods and stuff like that to the game. Which I'm quite interested in to getting into and having a good bit of fun with. But that's my plan for after this episode. I'm going to edit the episode and pretty much... That'll be it. That'll be my plan for the week, rest of the weekend. I'll be chilling out, playing some Fallout, having a good time. Because the series has really bloody grasped me back into the Fallout universe. Yeah, yeah. I've got to find out what I'm doing. Diablo 3 season reset on Friday, so yeah, that, that's that's my time. Level, level, level 1 new season character on Torment 6. <laughs> Honestly, with you, mate, it's either, oh yeah, there's a Rust wipe, or oh yeah, there's a Diablo season wipe. Uh, I played Rust once in the last, like, six weeks. Holy shit. He's a fibber. 
I mean, one wipe, I mean. So it's still yeah, like 30 yeah, hours. You need to start specifying, sir. <laughs> that's, kind of all, that's kind of all wipe, all, all Rust is, is one wipe. Yeah, that's it's fair. Probably, it's probably like 30 hours in total. That, that's... A couple of days. And I didn't touch it the entirety of March. Fucking hell. I can see you, like, in your recently played, all you've really got is Inspection Free Zone, Steam VR, and then Fallout 4. I mean, that is, Inspection Free Zone was awful. Yeah, I expected that. It was so bad. It was promptly refunded. Good, good. I even, I actually cancelled my refund request later the de that day. Reinstalled re it and went and played it again. It was just, it was just terrible. There was nothing happening. It was like, oh, you need to change this building into uh, a warehouse and change this one into a place for people to stay. You need, uh, you, you need a hundred wood for that. Oh, uh, let me clear out all the trees in, in a fucking entire radius, entire grid of the map. And I've got a third of the wood needed. And it also took to, to winter to get that. So I have no food or anything. Fun. Goodbye game. Refunded. <laughs> Fucking hell. Well, yeah. I think that's everything discussed. Unless Will's got anything else. Nothing I can think of, no. That's good to you. Right then. With all that said and done then. Thank you all very much for watching. If you have enjoyed, feel free to like, follow, subscribe. Uh, leave a comment yeah we always like to hear uh, and if you do hit subscribe please feel free to hit the little bell icon that way you'll feel, uh, be up to date with anything that we post and finally don't forget the discord yeah the discord is in the description if you do want to join we're always in the server as we demonstrate each week we're always there and if we do any like streams or just we're talking crap together we just sit in this <laughs> call it's something we've started also, doing. You can also, if you at any point have any ideas or anything you want us to talk about, there's also a channel for that. Oh, 100%. Uh, there's a load of channels set up for anything that you can really think of. And if there's anything else, just feel free to leave a comment. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. And we will see you next time. Bye for now, guys. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy.